So over the past 15 years working in solar, I've come up with these frequently asked questions, selling commercial solar, why would you want to go commercial solar, and some of the nuances that go along with it. You know, the first question I get is commercial solar in high demand. Well, if you asked me that question three, four years ago, I'd say it's in high demand in certain markets. Now with the adoption of commercial solar across the US, more and more businesses want to go solar. So who are you going to go after? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to go after customers that have high usage, manufacturing facilities, plastic injection molding, logistics, not necessarily storage facilities. They don't use a lot of electricity. Businesses that burn a lot of electricity are going to be the ones that you definitely want to go after. So how do you sell commercial solar? Well, you don't really sell commercial solar. You develop the project. I've gotten a lot of pushback for, well, I'm just going to go sell commercial. Well, you are selling, but you're developing a project and developing a project means you have to go through the steps. So if you haven't watched my six steps video, go back to the six steps video and follow through and that'll show you how to sell commercial solar. One of the big pieces that get gets missed in commercial solar is not getting to the decision maker. You know, there are different types of people in commercial businesses, whether, and depends on how big the organization is. If you're dealing with a sole proprietorship, usually there's one or two people that make the decision. But if you're dealing with multinational corporation or a corporation that's hundreds of millions in size and you have different levels of, of executives, you gotta get to the decision maker. The decision maker is the one that's gonna be able to understand the value proposition, which is the three things why commercial businesses go solar. One is I wanna take control of my operational expenses. I'm spending too much money and it's preventing me from making more Widgets. Number two is I want to take advantage of tax benefits. I don't want to send Uncle Sam all my money. I want to be able to keep that money in my pocket so I can reinvest it in my business. And I want to put something on my roof or my on the ground that's going to make money for me. Just imagine turning your roof into a multifamily home. It's a revenue producing asset that pays you every single day for the next 25 years. It's a tenant that will never die, never leave, never pay late, won't call you in the morning and say my heat doesn't work. And it's just going to produce money literally for 25 years. And then the last thing is over the last couple of years, more and more companies want to do something sustainable. So millennials that are really interested in going solar love the idea of doing something green. So if you do something green, you're showing your employees, your suppliers, and everyone else connected to your business that you're doing something really great for the environment. How do you make your sales process airtight? Well, you can hire someone like me, or you can have someone in your organization that actually puts the systems and processes to place. And remember, you have to be able to thread the needle from the moment you meet with the prospect right to the day that the check gets deposited in the bank. So thread that needle with that tightly knitted sales process. Here's what's missing with the sales process that people don't understand and that successful businesses don't, but those of you that are brand new getting into the business, I encourage you to have a sales process that's not dependent on people, but it's dependent on the process. You know, you can train people to understand the process, and when the process is in place, you can basically show them, hey, here's the color by numbers on how to sell solar. So what markets are best for solar? This is an exciting question because, again, if you asked me this question five, six years ago, I can give you four or five states. I mean, some of the states that are really doing super well in solar are California, there's Hawaii, there's Texas, there's New York, there's Florida, there's Massachusetts, there's New Jersey, there's North Carolina, South Carolina, there's Ohio. There's tons and tons of states that are doing really well. And I predict by the end of 2023, literally all 50 states will be solar friendly and you'll be able to install solar in any of those markets. You've sold your first commercial project, you're doing quite well, you're making some money, your profits are growing. So how do you create a great reputation in solar? Well, good people hang around good people, bad people gravitate towards bad people, negative like negative, <laughs> positive likes positive. So first thing you do is you wanna find really good projects to work on. Clients that are gonna be, or prospects that are gonna be really hard to work with, imagine what it's gonna be like trying to get paid and get the project done. So if you're finding a client that's just totally a disaster to work with, especially in commercial, you just wipe your hands clean and move on because they're never gonna be what we call a raving fan client. Tony Robbins defines raving fan client as a client that just cannot stop talking about you and referring you to everybody that they know, whether it be in their family, their friends, their business, their country club, they wanna tell everybody about you. It's like, have you tried out my painter? He's the greatest painter in the world. You wanna be known as the greatest solar company in the world. Second, and this one is just as important as the first one, is that you wanna absolutely make sure you have quality installations. Everybody's getting into the solar business. Everyone has to throw, I call racks and panels up on a roof, but quality installation comes from people who are certified. Make sure you find someone who's NABCED, N-A-B-C-E-P, NABCED certified. Make sure they've done solar before. Just because you've been in construction doesn't mean you're gonna be the greatest solar installer. Installing quality solar projects 
is going to lead to better referrals and better reputation. Another frequently asked question is, well, I already have residential solar, so how different is residential from commercial? Well, the quick answer is that it's pretty easy. It's, I call it the cookie cutter of solar. You know, residential is popping on the roof. The difference between residential and commercial is you can sell residential. You can also sell commercial, but with commercial, you want to develop the project. You want to develop a relationship. You have to understand finances. You have to have incredible amount of patience, and it's a much longer game. Now the question is, how do I know if my commercial solar company is positioned to scale? Well, first thing you have to do is make sure you take care of the three revenue generating components in a company. One is having a lead generation machine. You need to have digital eyeballs on you 24-7, 365 while you're sleeping. It's like making money while you're sleeping. You want to have people talking about you and looking for you 24-7, 365. Second is having the right systems and processes in place. This is going to be the bedrock of your company. So having systems and processes in place means that you have a playbook, all the activities from when you meet a prospect, right on through that prospect becoming a profitable customer and all the steps in between. Systems and processes are going to help you because once you start to scale with volume, you need to have the systems and processes to keep you on track to scale in a healthy way. And third is you need to have a coaching mentality. You have to be thinking, how can I coach my team to be better? How can I inspire them to be better? How can I bring the right mindset person into the, into the company? And by the way, culture doesn't start with hiring culture. Culture starts with you as the leader. Culture starts with your actions. It doesn't start with your words. It starts with actions. So if you have those three revenue generating components and having a, a, a coaching mentality, you are bound to be a very successful commercial solar company. So when's the best time to start a, a commercial solar company? It's funny, I had a conversation with a distributor the other day and he goes, this is the worst time to start a, a commercial solar company. I go, why? He says, well, we're having supply chain issues. I said, really? I said, so if I wait for supply chain issues to get resolved, I'll never start my company. So when's the best time to start your commercial solar company? Yesterday. When's the next best time? Right now. And here's what you need to do to make sure that your commercial solar company is gonna be successful. It all starts with you. You have to have the internal fortitude, you have to have the grit, you have to have the consistency and the focus, and you have to have the patience to work with business owners who are not thinking about putting solar up on their roof. They think about how do I make more money from producing more widgets. You need to have the patience, the internal fortitude, the grit, and if you have those things in place, you're gonna have a successful solar company.